Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Lieutenant General Xavier T. Brunson, Commanding General, America's First Corps, welcome to today's Change of Command Ceremony. We would like to welcome our distinguished guests, Lieutenant General Xavier Brunson, Commanding General, First Corps, Lieutenant James Gerard, Deputy Commanding General, USERPAC, Miss Kathleen Flynn, Mr. Gil Tam, Civilian Aide to the Secretary of the Army, Mr. Alan Ho, former civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army. Mr. Mike Ketchum, Consul General, New Zealand. Mr. So Young Lee, Consul General, South Korea. Mr. Blake Boyd, from the Office of State Representative, Pyrrhic. Ms. Rose Lee and Mr. Henry Lee, members of the Order of the Purple Heart and Gold Star families. The formation of troops before you consists of units assigned to the division and their organizational colors. Starting from left to right are the 25th Infantry Division Headquarters and Headquarters Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Joshua Patton. The 2nd Infantry Brigade Combat Team, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Graham White. The 3rd Infantry Brigade Combat Team, commanded by Colonel Rob Shaw. The 25th Infantry Division Color Guard, led by Command Sergeant Major Haney, 25th Infantry Division, Command Sergeant Major. The 25th Infantry Division Artillery Brigade, commanded by Colonel Joseph Katz. The 25th Infantry Division Combat Aviation Brigade, commanded by Colonel Matthew Schur. And the 25th Infantry Division Sustainment Brigade, commanded by Colonel Christopher Johnson. Music for today's ceremony is provided by the 25th Infantry Division Band under the direction of Chief Warrant Officer 3, Jonathan Crane. The salute battery for today's ceremony is provided by the 2nd Battalion, 11th Field Artillery Regiment, 25th Infantry Division, and the officer in charge is Captain James V. Hill. The commander of troops is Colonel Rob Bryant, Chief of Staff of the 25th Infantry Division, America's Pacific Division. At this time, Please direct your attention to the right side of the seating area, where Sergeant First Class Crump from the Sergeant Audie Murphy Club will present a lay to Julie Ryan on behalf of the soldiers and families of the division. In recognition of her devotion, dedication, and tireless efforts supporting the Tropic Lightning Division. Please direct your attention to the left of the seating area, where First Sergeant Tejada from the Sergeant Audie Murphy Club will present a lay to Mrs. Kelly Evans. This represents the beginning of a new relationship that will soon be formed in the command and in the community. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Please rise for the invocation given by the Division Chaplain, Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Long. Please join me in a prayer according to your faith tradition. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I humbly invoke your presence this morning as we say goodbye to Major General Ryan and his family and welcome Major General Evans and his family. Thank you to each of these great leaders who are standing before God, before our soldiers, and the Tropic Lighting Ohana. Thank you for all that Major General Ryan has done to make the Tropic Lighting Division as a whole experience mission success, both at home and aboard. I pray that you will continue to be with him and his family as they move on to the next chapter of their lives. I also pray that you will be with the incoming Commanding General Evans as he takes on the challenges that are ahead of him. Provide for him all that he needs to lead and strengthen him to serve with faithfulness, courage, and integrity. Grant your grace and mercy to his family as they support him. Finally, God, encourage and bless each one of us here today as we faithfully follow our new leader, move forward with our loyalty and doing our duty with the honor. Bless the Tropic Lighting Division as an extraordinary land force of blessing for the Pacific Theater and for the United States Army and for the United States of America. In your holy, precious name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. In a moment, you will see before you soldiers performing the Ha'a, a form of traditional Polynesian dance. It is a culturally appropriate experience. 
expression of pride, courage, resolve, and commitment. It is usually characterized by loud chanting, and powerful expressions of mana, or spiritual power. When performed in a group, the ha'a requires unity, cooperation, and dedication. This ha'a performed today is intended to recall the fighting history and spirit of the Tropic Lightning Division, to honor and glorify the colors of the division and its rich heritage. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in a round of applause. <clears throat> in a moment, you will hear sound attention. This is a call of alarm, at which time the ceremony begins. In a moment, you will hear sound adjutant's call, which indicates that the adjutant is about to form the division.
This call has opened parades of the American forces for over 150 years. After some preliminaries, the adju adjutant directs sound off and the band plays three chords. Having sounded off, the band marches in front of the troops and then countermarches to its original position. This march across the front line of, of the line is said to have originated with the Crusades. The troops offering themselves for holy service were drawn up in a long formation and the band countermarched only before those chosen to serve. In American ceremonies, the sound off has been handed down as a ceremonial tradition.
Now taking their positions on the field is the commander of troops, Colonel Rob Bryant and the division staff. Now taking their positions on the field is the official party consisting of the reviewing officer, Lieutenant General Xavier T. Brunson, the outgoing commanding general, Major General Joseph Ryan, and the incoming commanding general, Major General Marcus Evans. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of honors. Lieutenant General Brunson has deferred honors to Major General Ryan. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. At this time, Captain Vigil is presenting an expended round to Major General Ryan for his dedication and service to the 25th Infantry Tropic Lightning Division. At this time, Lieutenant General Brunson, Major General Ryan, and Major General Evans will make one final inspection of the division to ensure fitness and readiness before relinquishing command. They're escorted in the vehicle by the Commander of Troops. The history of the 25th Infantry Division is a story of courage, dedication, and duty. For over seven decades, the soldiers of Tropic Lightning have served in some of the most important conflicts in recent history all across the globe. Through the years, the division has earned a deserved reputation of fighting ability exemplified by our nickname, Tropic Lightning, and our motto, ready to strike, anywhere, anytime. The, div the 25th Infantry Division was organized on 1 October 1941. The division traces its lineage to the Hawaiian Division, which was organized in March 1921. As part of reorganization, the Hawaiian Division was deactivated, and in its place, the 24th and 25th Infantry Divisions were formed from its units. Just eight weeks later, soldiers of the 25th Infantry Division would face their first enemy. In the weeks that followed the attack, the 25th Infantry Division maintained its vigilance on the shores of Hawaii, ready to repel any invader. As the war continued into 1942, the tide turned against the Japanese and America went on the offensive. The 25th Infantry Division conducted training to operate in tropical environments prior to deployment to Guadalcanal in 1942. It was during the fight in Guadalcanal's jungles the 25th Infantry Division earned the nickname Tropic Lightning. From Guadalcanal, 
The division continued to advance through the northern Solomon Islands and later took part in the liberation of the Philippines. The 25th Infantry Division entered Japan at the end of World War II as part of the occupation forces, where it would remain for five years until the onset of the Korean War in June 1950. Tropic Lightning deployed to defend the port city of Pusan, where it held the line against relentless attacks. The tide of war would see the division break out from Pusan and move deep into North Korea, then forced back south by Chinese forces. The division counterattacked with Allied forces in 1951, taking back territory lost and guaranteeing the peace and freedom of South Korea by 1953. In 1954, the division returned to Hawaii after an absence of 12 years. In the early 1960s, the Vietnam War increased in intensity. The 25th Infantry Division began sending small contingents of troops to Vietnam in 1963 as part of a program to provide door gunners for helicopters ferrying troops in South Vietnam. These troops these shotgunners were the vanguard of the division's commitment to the war. In late 1965, the 25th Infantry Division was alerted to deploy its units to South Vietnam. Over the next several months, the 1st and 2nd Brigades traveled by sea, while the 3rd Brigade moved its soldiers and equipment by air. By April 1966, Tropic Lightning was in country and in the war. The Vietnam War was unlike any war the division had fought before. The enemy fought from the shadows and used hit-and-run tactics to strike. Operations by Tropic Lightning were designed to keep the enemy running and force him to engage. During 1966 and 1967, the division conducted numerous missions to find, fix, and destroy communist forces. When the enemy challenged American and Allied troops in the offensive, Tropic Lightning units fought in both the cities and the jungles in actions from the Cambodian border to just outside the South Vietnamese capital of Saigon. In 1970, the 25th Infantry Division took part in an operation to destroy communist sanctuaries in Cambodia, finally denying safe havens that had been available to the enemy for years. By 1971, all Tropic Lightning units had returned to Schofield Barracks after being in Southeast Asia for seven years. For the next three decades, the 25th Infantry Division served America in its role as Guardian of the Pacific, conducting joint exercises with partner countries, providing strength and support throughout the Pacific during natural and man-made disasters. In 1985, the division was reorganized into a light infantry formation, stressing rapid deployability and versatility following the end of the Cold War. The 25th Infantry Division faced a world without the Soviet Union, where new missions and threats were emerging. In 1995, Tropic Lightning deployed units to Haiti as part of Operation Uphold Democracy, with a mission of working with joint and international partners to support transition of power and reestablishment of stability. By 2000, the 25th Infantry Division was an important part of America's regional presence in what was being called the Pacific Century. Then came September 11, 2001. September 11, 2001 saw the division protect its own home from an enemy that could strike anywhere. In the days following the attack on America, Tropic Lightning soldiers took part in protecting vital facilities on Oahu. Like their brethren before them, on December 7, Tropic Lightning stood vigilant on the shores of Hawaii. In early 2004, the 25th Infantry Division left Hawaii for its first deployment in support of the global war on terrorism. The division's 2nd Brigade fought insurgents in Iraq's Kirkuk province, while the rest of the division deployed to Afghanistan. By the time of Tropic Lightning's return home in early 2005, the division saw free elections held in both countries and the enemy held at bay. Immediately upon returning, the 25th Infantry Division underwent a transformation to reorganize themselves into a more flexible and versatile formation. The respite from war would be fleeting, as the divisions would be called to serve in Iraq again. In August 2006, Tropic Lightning units deployed to Iraq. This time, 2nd Brigade would remain to complete transformation to a striker brigade, as the division headed back to war with the Special Troops Battalion, 3rd Infantry Brigade Combat Team, and Combat Aviation Brigade. The division headquarters took charge of northern Iraq. During its 15-month deployment, Task Force Lightning brought insurgent forces while training Iraq forces and mentoring local governments during the surge operations of 2007. While the soldiers of Task Force Lightning returned home in late 2007, the 2nd Brigade Combat Team began its second deployment to Iraq from January 2008 to March 2009. The Warrior Brigade served in the Taji area, continuing to deliver blows against a reeling Al-Qaeda while working with local government and security forces to protect and serve the people of Iraq. Today, the division headquarters and Hawaii-based BCTs have returned to their traditional role as Guardian of the Pacific, partnering with allied nations in exercises to maintain capabilities and strengthen relationships. A critical part of that renewed mission is training in the environment we're likely to face. 
institutions such as the Jungle Training Center and partnered training with Pacific allies not only reflect the priorities of the present, but the legacy of Tropic Lightning's history. Through war and peace, trial and victory, past and present, the 25th Infantry Division has represented America throughout the world. From its birth only weeks before Pearl Harbor to its latest chapters in Iraq and Afghanistan, Tropic Lightning has fought and defeated the enemies of freedom and democracy. The enemies have changed through our history, but the result was always the same. Victory for Tropic Lightning. The positioning of the colors at the center of the formation represents their presence at the forefront of the unit during the heat of battle. As the regimental system developed, units were assigned a specific color or number for its regimental colors. This was done to aid in identification and positioning on the battlefield. Their position at the front and center of the formation provided a point on which the unit could dress. For more than two centuries, the Stars and Stripes is the banner under which Americans have lived, fought, and died. More than a symbol, the flag is the embodiment of our government, people, ideals, and values. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for our national anthem.
please be seated. At this time, Lieutenant General Brunson will now oversee the passing of the colors from Major General Ryan to Major General Evans. The passing of the colors symbolizes the transfer of command authority and responsibility from the outgoing commander to the incoming commander. The passing of the colors from the command sergeant major to the outgoing commander signifies the key role of the non-commissioned officer corps as the guardian and protector of the colors and the men and women who serve to preserve glory. The passing of the colors from the outgoing commander to the senior commander signifies the relinquishing of command and heartfelt gratitude for the support, guidance, and opportunity to serve. The passing of the colors from the senior commander to the incoming commander represents the trust and confidence in the new commander's leadership and commitment to care for the organization. The passing of the colors from the incoming commander to the command sergeant major is his first act in command and verifies his confidence that the non-commissioned officer corps will continue to dress on the colors. By authority of Army Regulation 600-20, paragraph 2-5 Delta, the undersigned assumes command of United States Army Hawaii and the 25th Infantry Division. Major General Marcus S. Evans, United States Army, commanding. Ladies and gentlemen, the reviewing officer for today's ceremony, Lieutenant General Xavier T. Brunson. I'm old enough to know that that applause is not because I'm about to talk, but because this 56-year-old body got up on this stand without falling. So I would appreciate another round of applause because that's my greatest fear. There is a list of distinguished attendees at this ceremony. It's almost everyone who's in a chair here, but a special group I'd like to recognize right now is the Gold Star families. If you could please stand and be recognized and receive our applause. Thank you so much for what you've committed to the nation. I'd be remiss if I did not begin any remarks that I have to make here today if I did not mention the troubles, and I'll just call them troubles, that are going on in this state in Maui. I would like to offer our deepest condolences to the people of Maui who are recovering, who've lost loved ones, who've lost their homes. You are all in our prayers and our thoughts, and I will tell you that as this Division has done more than most. This army in the Pacific has done more than most. Uh, we remain wholly committed to assisting in your community's recovery. Recent challenges here in Hawaii from the wildfires in Maui to the Red Hill water crisis to the Mauna Loa eruption have demonstrated the strength of the family that's been built around the 25th Infantry Division. And while the Tropic Lightning Division plays an important part in the security of the Indo-Pacific region, the division cannot fulfill that role without first meeting its critical duty to serve and support our communities here at home. The 25th Infantry Division has risen to these twin challenges magnificently during the command of Major General Joe Ryan. My Army Ohana has included Joe Ryan since 1996. And during his command of this division, he has overseen notable milestones in the division's history and repeated displays of the quality of its soldiers. And we're all grateful to him and Julie and Abby and Joe, who couldn't be here, 
as well as super tall Ellie for their leadership. But it's been more than just leadership with Joe Ryan. It's been care, concern, and love of this division. And in that vein, I would say to the soldiers on the field, rest! <laughs> Under Joe's stern tutelage, the division celebrated its 80th birthday. The Tropic Lightning Division built and maintained readiness in the Indo-Pacific Theater through training rotations at the Joint Pacific Multinational Readiness Center, and it's grown substantially and tremendously in capability under Major General Ryan's leadership. The division improved the posture of the Army and the Joint Force in the region. He's built relationships and trained alongside like-minded allies and partners from Australia, the Philippines, Thailand, Indonesia, Korea, and other locations across the Pacific. Tropic Lightning soldiers not only carried American values halfway across the world, but demonstrated them here at home as well. And this, nowhere, nowhere was this better exemplified than Specialist Rene Rodriguez of 3rd BCT. Is Specialist Rodriguez here? He might not be, but his story is. Specialist Rodriguez recently displayed personal courage here in Hawaii and was awarded the Soldier's Medal. And it demonstrates the best qualities of not only the American soldier, but America's Pacific Division. When one goes away, another one comes. And we've been blessed to have Major General Evans' parents join us here today. David and Sheila, thank you for making the trip out here for this ceremony. But most especially, thank you for being the parents of our new Commanding General of the 25th, Major General Evans, who that truck is for, I believe. <laughs> Marcus, Kelly, Emma Grace, Madison, and Ethan, who couldn't be here, we welcome you to this team and are thankful to have you at our side as we deal with other demanding things that will come on us in the days and years to come. You're arriving here at a demanding time. And as we face these challenges at home and across the region, I can think of no better leader, the right leader, at the right time to move us forward than you, Marcus. I count it a joy and an honor to have the opportunity to serve with you again, and we look forward to all that you and Kelly will do for this great division. God bless you and yours, the people of Maui, our fellow service members here and around the world, and God bless our United States Army. Tropic Lightning, courage. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Joseph A. Ryan. I want to first start by thanking the Department of Emergency Services for doing that drive-by. I knew that they could not stay away, even though we blocked the road. Um, sir, thank you for those remarks. And I think, I think you actually bought me a couple of years, because I thought it was around like 93, 94 we knew each other. But to have family here, to you know, family is important in Hawaii, and, and to have family here as part of my change of command and the people I celebrate it with and the people I actually execute it with, like Lieutenant General Xavier Brunson and Major General Marcus Evans, both of whom who I've known for decades, uh, is really important. And it makes, this, it makes this actually pretty easy because you know that what you've dedicated yourself to for the last two years is in good hands. So first I want to say aloha and ikomamai to our guests and friends and family. Julie and I are eternally grateful that you've all come here today, whether you're from our extended family of years past or, or our Hawaii family. We appreciate your love and support, as always, welcome. I stood here and I spoke two years ago about commanding with the Hawaiian values of ha a ha a and alakai in mind, to be humble and modest, to respect others, to persevere, to lead with courage and commitment, 
Today, it's only what we have done collectively and what we will do in the years to come that matters. Deeds, not words. There are far too many people to thank, then there's time to do so. I will pick just a few that represent the many. General Charlie Flynn and Lieutenant General Xavier Brunson command this theater army and America's first corps with passion and trust. Gentlemen, your leadership is inspiring to me every day. Civilian aides to the Secretary of the Army, Gil Tam and Noe Kalipi, who unfortunately could not be here, among many others, educated and guided me. They and their ohana represent the best of this community and these beautiful islands. The members of the Tropic Lightning Foundation, General Retired Dave Bramlett, Alan Ho, Rose and Henry Lee, representing Command Sergeant Major Henry Lee, Carol Kai Onaway, and others, thank you for your unwavering support to this division. Craig Dietrich, Dan Missigoy, Steve McGonigal, among the many leaders and workers on our installations here on Oahu and on the Big Island, thank you for the heavy lifting you've done to keep our Army cities running. And of course, the officers, non-commissioned officers and soldiers of the great 25th Infantry Division, represented by Scott Galloway, Rob Bryant, and of course, my right-hand man, Command Sergeant Major Rob Haney. What an honor it has been to serve with you. Strike hard. Marcus Evans has been my teammate for the last 25 years. I'm nothing if I'm not utterly envious of him today. He and Kelly are, very simply, joining the greatest division in the Army with a critical mission in the most consequent, consequential region of the world. Congratulations to you both. My wife Julie and my daughter Ellie are here today. As General Brunson noted, my daughter Abby and my son Joseph are in New York City. We've been together on Oahu at Schofield Barracks a few times these last two years. Too few, to be honest. And we're not alone in that regard. We endure separation and live this life because it's the right thing to do. That, however, does not make it easier. I love you all so much. To the soldiers on the field, sometime before taking command two years ago, I read a short passage. Quote, before enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. It's an ancient Eastern adage that can mean many things. But to me, it represents the intrinsic value of the work that we do, day in and day out, to keep our country safe from its adversaries. It can be tedious, but it is important. It's so important, we take an oath to it. I'm very thankful, incredibly thankful, that all of you are committed to it. Chop wood and carry water. Tropic Lightning, this will defend. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander of United States Army Hawaii and Commanding General, 25th Infantry Division, Major General Marcus Evans. Aloha and mahalo. I'd like to first thank God for this incredible opportunity for Kelly and I to be a part of this amazing team, a team that is comprised of this historic division, the U.S. Army Hawaii team and the larger Hawaii Ohana. General Flynn, General Brunson, thank you both for this opportunity to command in this division. Sir, thank you for presiding over this ceremony today. A ceremony is like this don't just happen without an incredible amount of hard work, planning, and coordination. For the collective team who worked so hard to put this together today, 
from the Hui Ha team to protocol, the band, all the supporting details, and most of all, the soldiers. Thank you. Kelly, thank you for your continued support and all you do. We're blessed to have three children who unfortunately couldn't be here today. Emma Grace pursuing her career in Atlanta, Madison finishing up her senior year at the University of Mississippi, and Ethan said, Dad, i got to be on a six-mile road march, so unfortunately I'll miss it watching this on the, uh, on the FaceTime Live. We love you. Couldn't be prouder of you. We miss you, and we look forward to seeing you all here on the island. Hey, Mom and Dad, thank you very much for always just showing up, making the trip out here, always being at these ceremonies over the years. It means the world to Kelly and I. Thanks to all the friends and family who made the trip out to paradise or just stepped away from your job here on the island to spend a little time here with the 25th. Joe and Julie, Kelly and I can't thank you enough for this transition, and more importantly, for you all's friendship over the years. Thank you both for what your leadership and service has meant to this division and to our Army. Joe, all the best in your next assignment. Command Sergeant Major, the division looks great today and represents a force that remains ready to deploy, fight, and win. I'm truly blessed to be part of such an incredible unit as the Tropic Lightning Division and look forward to serving alongside you all. The history and legacy of this organization is replete with examples of courage, selfless service, and mission accomplishment. It is the honor of a lifetime to serve with you all during this time in our nation's history. Thank you for all you have done and will continue to do. Tropic Lightning, courage, one team. God bless America.
Ladies and gentlemen, as the national colors pass your position, please render the appropriate courtesies. The division staff is led by the commander of troops, Colonel Rob Bryant. The G1 is Lieutenant Colonel Amber White. The G2 is Lieutenant Colonel Brian Bork. The G3 is Lieutenant Colonel Bishop Sparks. The G4 is Major Angel Torres. The Tropic Lightning Band, commanded by Chief Warrant Officer 3, Jonathan Crane, and First Sergeant Aaron Jun Johnson. Drum Major is Staff Sergeant Philip Green. <laughs> headquarters and Headquarters Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Joshua Patton and Command Sergeant Major David Goines. <clears throat> Second Brigade Combat Team, commanded by Colonel Graham White and Command Sergeant Major Garrett O'Keefe. First Battalion, 21st Infantry, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Yoon and Command Sergeant Major Stephen Daggett. First Battalion, 27th Infantry, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Case and Command Sergeant Major Evan Johnson. Second Squadron, 14th Cavalry Regiment, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Adam McCombs and Command Sergeant Major Giovanni Jones.
65th Brigade Engineer Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Owens and Command Sergeant Major Ryan Schooneman. Two twenty fifth Brigade Support Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Jason Capes and Command Sergeant Major Alexis Holmes. Third Brigade Combat Team, commanded by Colonel Rob Shaw and Command Sergeant Major Sean Curry. Second Battalion, 27th Infantry, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Pete Lezinski and Command Sergeant Major Dan Roney. Second Battalion, 35th Infantry, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Pete Walter and Command Sergeant Major Dale Box. Third Squadron, 4th Cavalry Regiment, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Josh Shizoff and Command Sergeant Major Eric Kynard. Twenty ninth Brigade Engineer Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Josh Long and Command Sergeant Major Nicholas Oakes.
325th Brigade Support Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Brandon Grooms and Command Sergeant Major Ron Brady. Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, as the national colors pass your position, please render the appropriate courtesies. Ladies and gentlemen, the 25th Infantry Division Color Guard, led by the Division Command Sergeant Major, Robert Haney. The Division Artillery Brigade, commanded by Colonel Joseph Katz and Command Sergeant Major Kevin Van Lu. Third Battalion, 7th Field Artillery, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Cahill and Command Sergeant Major Michael Lowe. Second Battalion, 11th Field Artillery, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Lucas LaCour and Command Sergeant Major Robert Byler. One twenty fifth Intelligence and Electronic Warfare Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Michael Glover and Command Sergeant Major James Riddle. Twenty-fifth Infantry Division Combat Aviation Brigade, <clears throat> commanded by Colonel Matthew Schur, Command Sergeant Major Brandon Rausch, and Command Chief Warrant Officer Daniel Lin. <clears throat> Second Battalion, Twenty-fifth Aviation Regiment, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Lossing, and Command Sergeant Major Jose Ortiz.
3rd Battalion, 25th Infantry, correction, 25th Aviation Regiment, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Samuel Deal, and Command Sergeant Major Jason Bryant. Second Squadron, 6th Cavalry Regiment, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Matthew McNeil and Command Sergeant Major Justin Webb. Ninth Aviation Support Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Buckingham and Command First Sergeant Norman Robles. The 25th Infantry Division Sustainment Brigade, commanded by Colonel Christopher Johnson and Command Sergeant Major Thomas Marnock. <laughs> 25th Division Sustainment Troops Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel William Lincoln and Command Sergeant Major Scott Stripoli. Five twenty fourth Division Sustainment Support Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Sarah Komu and Command Sergeant Major Eduardo Gutierrez. One twenty fifth Finance Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Leviticus Pope and Command Sergeant Major Craig Rodland. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of Aloha Oi 
and the singing of Tropic Lightning March and the Army Song. The words for each song are in your program. Along, sing a song, we're the army of the free. Count the brave, count the true. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Mahalo for attending.